<laughs> Great squirrel thread. Jordan Peterson is trending because he's apparently writing another 12 rules for life, which I think warrants a trip down memory lane thread with clips, revealing him to be a grifter of the highest order beginning and with the time he got destroyed within the span of a few seconds. Right. Oh, yeah. Fucking Jim Jeffries fucking owned him, too. Right. Fucking Jim Jeffries owned his ass. Mate. Jim fucking Jeffries owned him. You got owned by a fucking bogan. Just kidding, Jim Jeffries not bogan. Anyway, let's Making watch. people bake a cake for a gay wedding. Making them do it? Yeah. I don't think that's a very good idea. But here's the argument. So should they be able to deny making a cake for a black couple if they don't like black people? Allowed to? Probably. That doesn't mean it's right. Okay, so then we had the civil rights movement. Yeah. where they said black people, you had to serve them in your restaurants and yeah. stuff like that. And it did work and it did make our society better. But would yeah. you argue that that still wasn't right? No, that was right. Why, why is that different to now if you didn't want to make a cake for black, black people? I love when I'm in 2020 when I, or whenever this was shot, okay? And I'm still contemplating whether or not there should be a civil rights uh, act. It's pretty cool, though, because he's so open-minded. Remember, guys, he's not, he's misunderstood, okay? But he's so open-minded, he's still contemplating whether or not black people should be able to drink from the same water fountain, and the same goes for uh, homosexuals. I mean, that's, that is actually, uh, it, you're just misunderstood, I think, because he, like, we just don't understand him. Just like he doesn't understand, you know, why marginalized communities should be protected in a society that often oppresses and marginalizes them. Like, that's... I don't understand. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not different. <laughs> no, that was right. Why, why is that different? Look, he, he took a firm stance. It only took him, like, 20 seconds to get there, but he had to think it through. It's like, homie had to think through the pros and cons of the civil rights movement, okay? Only to extend it to uh, gays as well. You, that, that still wasn't right. No, that was right. <laughs> why, why is that different to now if you didn't want to make a cake for black, black people? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not different. Yeah. Maybe I was wrong. See? The one time he takes a stance, he instantly changes it. Yeah, well, that's the other thing. So most people also loved claiming that Jordan Peterson just like simply wasn't saying what you thought he was saying. Why was he, why did he always get away with that? Because he refused to actually fucking take a firm stance on things and made it seem as though he was simply offering descriptive statements, okay? Even though the underlying premise was guided by his ideology. Okay, and that's precisely why people would always say you're taking him out of context. You should read all of his books. You should read all of his fucking, you should watch all of his videos. You should watch all of the, you know, lectures that he did. And the reality is that, like, he is a collection of all of his attitudes and all of his fucking takes and all of his uh, opinions. And it's not that he was, like, sometimes in the wrong or whatever the fuck. He personally absolutely fucking believes this shit. But for so many people, it was very hard for them to recognize that he was actually a fucking right winger from the jump. Okay? And see, this is it. Wasn't this interview heavily clipped against his favor? No. It's, you can say that about everything, bro. bro. You will say that about everything forever because you don't want your intellectual daddy that you have developed a parasocial affinity for to look like a fucking pathetic uh, right-winger. Okay? That's what it is. But he himself admits it. And actually, I'm going to show you this in a brief moment because Ethan did a better job than maybe I could even do. For years, I had this thing going where people would say, oh, and this is kind of what we're getting at from a different angle. I would say uh, they would be afraid of what we would lose if we lost religion. And I basically said, demonstrate to me any f benefit. Oh, you'd lose that... art and poetry and drama and narrative Why? and story. Are there, are there no godless artists and poets? Well, there are artists and poets who think they're godless. <laughs> what a psychotic take. But by the way, I don't know if many of you know this. 
And this is one of the best ways to get like all of those fucking weirdo right wing adjacent Andes to like despise Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson has a gigantic following in the Muslim world for takes exactly like that. Okay. Because he is a conservative. He is a reactionary. And there are a lot of conservative Muslims who literally fucking watch Jordan Peterson lectures and go, that's my guy. Okay. Straight up. Because, because he is, he is no different in his worldview and attitudes than a, a Muslim fundamentalist. Obviously his takes are, are, uh, you know, his takes on Islam are, you know, just as annoying as, uh, every other, uh, Sam Harris, uh, wannabe Sam Harris archetype, but. So, he literally is the worst human being ever because he has no factual base, no common sense. It's just con he's just a conservative. He's not the worst human being, but he is just a conservative. That's it. He's just a, a reactionary conservative who is, like, very religious and believes in a really rigid way that the world works. And that often puts him... That often puts him... Uh, uh, diametrically opposed to like other worldviews and values that he's supposed to espouse because he can't be open and honest about some of the more nefarious and, and awful points of view that he has. He has to always couch it under objective thought. He always has to hide his worldview in statements that come across as neutral and academic. Okay? So when he actually ends up fucking up and like taking a, a, an understandable stance on a particular subject, he always... Your, uh, Peterson takes her disingenuous and delusional. I At this stage, if you've never watched me listen, or, or if you've never listened to me talk about... Oh, he said Pepela, fuck you. Uh, if you've ever... If you're in here and you're still like a fan of Jordan Peterson, I urge you to be open-minded, okay? About what I am going to say. I've always been right about Jordan Peterson for a very long time. Um, but you know, just be open-minded, try to be as open-minded as you possibly can. Okay. He himself has said he's more liberal than conservative. So is Tim pool. Are you stupid enough to believe that Tim pool is a liberal? Tim pool says he's liberal. Dave Rubin says he's liberal. Do you think these guys are liberals or do you think that there's actually a lot of money to be made? by making it seem like you yourself are a liberal who just simply agrees with everything that the conservatives agree with. Huh. Anyway, it's like when Sargon said he's a classical liberal and I believed him in 2016. Yeah, a lot of people did that. Yeah, I'm a classical liberal and I believe the left has gone too far and that's why I no longer believe in climate change science that's well established and there's a scientific consensus on it. Anyway, so... Jordan Peterson's response to the H3H3 H3 drama. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a second. It's honestly the centrist trap making people feel like they are more reasonable both sides in it. Yeah. He is a centrist or he uh, operated like a centrist all the time at a time when like being a centrist was the most popping shit you could do. Okay. It, it was just like. I used to like you. What? What? Even... this person first of all I'm rejecting your friend request you're very close to a band I'm just letting you know Cal Cunningham. you do this every day and it fucking annoys me okay 
Um, but yeah, Jordan Peterson has had, uh, has always had reactionary takes. He's always been a fucking burden on society in general. Um, and, uh, it has been really, really frustrating. Most importantly, because like, Oh, he was referencing what Jordan Peterson said to Ethan Klein in that Twitter thread. Oh, okay. If a young person believes that the uh, climate, the global warming um, problem on the climate is something that needs to be tackled quickly and they can't wait until they grow up and become prime ministers to do it, do, do you think collective responsibility overrides individual responsibility in a huge issue like that? No. <laughs> okay. I don't. I, I think that generally, I think that generally, I think that generally people, I think generally people have things that are more within their personal purview that are more difficult to deal with and that they're avoiding and that generally the way they avoid them is by adopting uh, pseudo moralistic stances on large scale social issues so that they look good to their friends and their neighbors. That's what it looks like. Yeah, no, dude, it's like. No, the way to tackle climate change is not through systemic change whatsoever. Which, by the way, I don't even believe is real, for the record. It's actually by, uh, you know, using a paper straw. And also, uh, reusing your plastic bags. And by recycling. Cleaning the environment starts with cleaning your room. After all, what is the environment if not just a large room? Only you can change the climate, which is not even changing. <laughs> yeah. No, what he's trying to say there is that people don't uh, want to change themselves. People don't want to change their behaviors, and that's why they act like they uh, they act like they care about changing the climate, and they use it as a cop out to be like, "Well, I'm trying to make systemic change," but it's like. You know, that is only applicable to someone like Jordan Peterson, or that is only applicable to someone if that person legitimately is as disingenuous as Jordan Peterson is. That's the whole point. Jordan Peterson cannot comprehend a world in which people are genuinely saying, no, we want systemic fucking change, dude. Well, holy shit. And there's no other way to, there's no other way to correct the course. Okay. That's the point. He's only, he is using, I guess, more academic language to basically say, these people are virtue signaling, okay? That's it. And you can, you can make his takes as easy to understand as possible, okay? It's just like he adds multiple different unnecessary complexities into his language to make it seem like it's actually an objective, academic, neutral take when it's just him saying it's virtue signaling. I mean, is he wrong? Oh, come on. Stop baiting me, man. Stop. Stop. It's so fucking annoying. Uh, do you think uh, that Dre JP has done more bad than good? He seems to really believe he's beneficial to people. Yeah, because he's a fucking... He's a narcissistic asshat. Of course he thinks he's been beneficial to people. And no, I personally absolutely believe he's been worse overall. Anyway, this is the... The reason why this entire conversation started was because Ethan... On his own, by the way, I just want to fucking point this out because motherfuckers are like, dude, you did this or whatever. Very strange. First of all, I would have never told Ethan to delete the Jordan Peterson videos. I would not delete the Jordan Peterson videos. I understand why he did it, but I would not have deleted the Jordan Peterson videos. Not only that, but also I've been asking him to try to get Jordan Peterson on and he is working on it as well. So there's that. So let's just remind ourselves of this reality before we continue. Many of you that have already, many of you are that are in here already know what my stances are on this stuff. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, but you know, it bears repeating, especially because it's probably going to be a YouTube video eventually. So, um, Ethan, a couple days ago, or I guess yesterday, technically, I don't know exactly when it was, but he said, uh, or 20 hours ago. So yesterday. Said years ago, I interviewed Jordan Peterson before I was very familiar with his politics. He was an interesting guest who I enjoyed sitting with, but especially now I can see he's a dangerous gateway to alt right, transphobia, and COVID misinfo. I removed both interviews today. So people got mad at him for doing this uh, and said, you know, you're fucking piece of shit. And then they started getting into, <laughs> I mean, this is pretty funny. 
But other than like this funny joke, uh, people basically started getting into the the uh, the same old rehashed arguments of like Jordan Peterson defense brigade. It was like live and alive, basically. Uh, sometimes I feel like the thing that killed Jordan Peterson wasn't uh, Michaela Peterson, you know, uh, who who tried to get him to get experimental benzo therapy. But actually just uh, people not paying attention to him because reactionaries have nothing. It wasn't the apple cider. It was the fact that like, you know, he went away. So Democrats and liberals no longer paid attention to him. And I think that that is the reason why there was no brigade defending him anymore. You know what I mean? Because that is the only way that the right uh, galvanizes. That is the only way that the right uh, get together. Wait, what is this? Why did Bruce say this? What? What? Did, I can't see the Keemstar tweet. I tried to look at it in incognito, and it's not showing. Did he get him to delete it? Anyway. He said Bruce DM. So. So basically, oh, this is pretty funny, by the way. Jordan Peterson literally responded to him on this one, too. He said, not anymore. It's now shiny, clean, and beautiful, too, like the rest of my house. Now that, now that I finished renovating and recovered from being ill... Dude, it's so good. So fucking good, dude. It's me! 